What I've tried to build is a mirror that can show you a different way of seeing reality. I'm calling it Moo Mirror. It started as a pretty simple idea from just sitting on a cushion for a while and it turned into a month long journey into multiple different software platforms and many different dimensions and then completely changed the way I see my role as an artist designer in our current AI world. So what is it? Moo Mirror is a modern form of an ancient technology. For thousands of years, Zen has been using koans or riddles to encode mental hacks that help people see reality in a new way. Usually you have to meditate on a koan for a while and then eventually something just clicks and your brain shifts. One of the simplest of these koans is called Joshu's dog and it goes something like this. A monk asks the Zen master Joshu, does a dog have Buddha nature? And Joshu replies, Moo! That's the whole riddle. Zen doesn't make a lot of sense a lot of the time at least at first, because what people are trying to do when they're unlocking this koan is they just take that strange word mu, which roughly translates as like nothing or wrong question or like no answer. And they say mu again and again and again in their heads over a long period of time. And eventually what happens after days or weeks or months of, of saying mu, 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 as you look around the world is the sound, the kind of nonsense sound mu overwrites all the normal labeling that our brains make when we look around and we see like, oh, pictures on the wall and a door and a me. All of that is like moo, moo, moo. So why would anyone want to do it? Well, it might sound strange to you, but it actually has a basis in modern particle physics and string theory. But I'm not going to get into that because that is not my wheelhouse. At a high level, what it means is that although we believe we are totally separate entities from everything around us, I believe I am not this door. That's just a helpful illusion. And before you say that's ridiculous, obviously you're not a door. You're correct. But consider eating a banana. Clearly you are not a banana. You're you. But at what point does a banana stop being a banana? Like you peel it, it's still a banana. You're holding it, it's still a banana. You take a bite, it's... When does that bite stop being a banana and become you? At some point, arbitrarily, humans have decided through language, we're gonna call it you if it's inside your skin, but a banana if it's inside a banana skin, is that right? But like even those arbitrary labels kind of break down if you peel a banana and you have a banana sitting on the countertop, you still call that a banana. So the point is the label of banana and the label of you are useful to describe the world around us, but they're not actually describing some fundamental reality. The fundamentally true thing here is that molecules, atom, energy, matter was in a location that we called banana for a second. And then some of that matter went into a location that we're calling me. And all that really happened is matter moved around. A banana was never created or destroyed and you never really existed. Like nothing really changed on a fundamental level when you ate a banana. In this perspective, neither you nor the banana exist as truly separate entities. And if this isn't making any sense right now, that's totally normal. Or if it's making sense on some kind of weird abstract intellectual level, that's totally fair. But the strange thing about Zen koans is that when you really noodle on them for a while, the moment they click, that insight just sits in your body as a felt experience. You experience reality as this one thing that is unfolding and changing shape through time. And that can be a really intense, amazing experience. It's called non-duality. And it feels totally different than reasoning it out with words like I'm doing now and probably completely failing it. It's incredibly humbling. It's also incredibly uplifting and it creates a ton of compassion for everyone and everything because you realize that from this perspective, it's just different areas of one thing. But most people don't have the time or energy or patience to sit on a cushion and think moo, 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 for long enough to rewrite all the labels in their mind. So I wanted to try and make an art piece that might help some folks shortcut this. But the problem was how? How do you show what's invisible? How do you show that we are all just made of the same stuff? Especially when our brains are so good at seeing those, the forms of different stuff as different things, as door, as shelf, as me. So I had this visual metaphor. I was like, what if we just show all stuff as dots? Everything in the world is made of dots and 
what we're calling form, like the form of my body, is just made of a clustering of dots, a metaphor for matter. I'm just matter clustered right here, and maybe that banana is matter clustered over there. So first I tried to do it in 2D with a program called Processing. I spent an hour with GPT making a simple prototype. First I asked it to spawn a 2D grid of dots, and then pay attention to the mouse's X and Y coordinates, and then attract the dots towards the mouse cursor if the dots were within a certain distance of it. And if the mouse cursor moved away, then the dots should spring back to their origin. The idea being that as the mouse moves through the world of this dot grid, let's see if we can reveal the mouse cursor to be made up of no more than temporarily co-located stuff. And it was kind of cool. There was something to it. How might it look in three dimensions? So then I set up a simple scene in virtual reality using Unity and MetaQuest hand tracking. It turns out dots, or spheres really, are computationally expensive. So instead of spheres, I used cubes. And first I generated a 3D grid of cubes in X, Y, and Z axes, and just made them pick upable, which was surprisingly fun. Then I created a simple mechanic based on shaking a cube to reset the scene, because I think spatial computing needs to get away from buttons. Then I worked with GPT to write code that would do something similar to the original processing script, but in three dimensions and in virtual reality. And my goodness, there were a ton of bugs, but eventually we ironed out the kinks. The problem was that the metaphor completely failed if you could still see your hand, because if we're trying to get away from labels, then seeing a representation of my hand is not helping us here. So, then I needed to figure out a way to make the hand invisible in VR so that as you're moving your physical hands in, around this VR world, you're seeing where your hands are only represented as a cluster of cubes. And there was something to it. It might be hard to see in this video, but the experience of moving your body around and having matter cluster to create your body, it was scratching at this moo idea that I was trying to communicate, but it was a little too different from reality to really be able to map what was going on here as a metaphor back to, oh, everything in the real world is made up of building blocks. I tried using pass through so you could see the normal world through the blocks, but that actually made it even worse. Maybe we gotta just like let that idea lie and, and try a new visual metaphor. So then I mocked up a new idea in Premiere Pro by just manually layering square titles on top of a video file. What if when you pick up an object in the world, it is revealed that it's actually just made up of these blocks. Like, instead of having all these blocks floating around you all the time, how could we only show the blocks when you interacted with an object? Could some form of pixelation help release our minds from labeling the stuff all around us? Like, if this door were more pixelated, could I just see it as the form that's making it up instead of having my brain jump to door? So for the next set of these experiments, I decided to use P5. It's the JavaScript version of processing. And I chose it because it would easily allow me to read information from a webcam and then also host this experience online for anyone to see, which is part of the initial idea, is helping people see reality in a new way. So I wanted it to be easily distributable. First, I just made a breathing rainbow just to figure out how P5 works and how to get data from the webcam. Shout out to Dan from Coding Train for his outstanding tutorials. And then I tried an idea. What if we rendered reality as a series of overlapping dots, which might vary in size according to their brightness? And what if they breathed slowly in and out? Like, what if we made this pixelation beautiful? Perhaps looking at this would remind the viewer that all stuff in the world is made of the same stuff on some fundamental level. So I wrote this code and there was something to it, but ultimately it did kind of feel like I just slapped a pixelation filter onto a webcam. So then I thought if the purpose of this metaphor is to show that there aren't actually boundaries between anything, then maybe a dot is too discrete. Maybe it should be more of a Gaussian blurry gradient. But it turns out there's no simple way to do this in P5, so GPT helped me write a function that draws concentric circles with different transparency values depending on how big each circle is and how far away it is from the center of the circle. And after a bunch of debugging to figure out why all of my circles were still rendering as solid circles, we finally figured out how to make the blurry version. And it honestly felt pretty beautiful and dreamy but ultimately unfulfilling. And here's where I had my first sleepless night of the whole project, because the challenge for the first time in my entire career as an artist wasn't the engineering. 
I've now learned enough about the basics of coding to be able to collaborate with GPT in a way that feels fluid. I can break down my ideas into executable prompts, I can debug its code when it doesn't work right, and I can also modify the code on my own to work exactly as I please. And then for its part, GPT is the most incredible coding partner who egolessly listens to my insane ideas and knows all the math, the logic, and the specific syntax to create code out of them. Which means that every time I have a new idea, we can get a working prototype of it together in an hour or two. But yet this piece still wasn't working. I was making things that might be beautiful, but I didn't think they were conveying any of the idea of Moo. <sighs> As an artist, my role is to take an idea and distill it into the purest droplet I can, so that this idea that was in my mind or body and soul can just immediately become yours. And this distillation process can be wildly frustrating, especially when I'm trying to take a 2000 year old idea about the invisible nature of reality. So at this point I asked my professor Jose how he comes up with ideas that resonate. And his answer was simple and it was exactly what I'm doing. Whenever you have an idea, you have to build it. You, you can't react to something that's just in your head. All these ideas that I'd had that weren't working, they kind of worked in my head. I had to build them before I could see that like, oh, the engineering isn't the issue. The art itself, this droplet is not distilled enough. So he suggested a new one. What if there's something about turning one picture into another picture by moving the pixels around or sorting them, like morphing yourself into a forest to see that the same stuff makes up both of you. I thought, okay, great. This is gonna be the nth time that I restart this non-duality mirror from scratch, so let's go. We take a photo from the webcam and then we take another photo. If the previous photo has a pixel that's a similar enough color to a pixel in the new photo, then we move that pixel from the previous photo smoothly over to the new photo. And then we're randomly seeding their movement and we're doing all of it in a browser. To my surprise, I couldn't stop watching it. I found myself staring at it as each frame, the dots would move to a new location something subliminally started to work on my system. My eyes stopped seeing the world in terms of discrete objects because everything was too pixelated. But all things in the world were clearly being shown to be made up of the same stuff, which was always in this state of movement. I was like, oh my goodness, this is starting to get it. I spent 10 more hours refining the script, changing the speed at which the dots begin moving to be smoother, using a cubic function, experimenting with different dot sizes, putting in a breathing mechanic, trying different ways of layering the dots on top of each other, blurring the dots a little bit, and ultimately I settled on this. This is the Moo mirror. When I showed my partner and we both were in the frame, the dots just flowed between our faces and the wall behind us. She would exhale. I would inhale, and all of reality was just revealed to be this shifting, unfurling, changing mass of labelless stuff. If you stare at it long enough, maybe reality will start to shift for you too a little, or maybe it'll just be pretty. My hope for this artwork is that it might help shift something in the way you see the world if you stare at it for a few minutes. And my hope for this video is that it might inspire you to go and build an idea in your head, even if you don't know how to build it, by learning just enough to be able to work with these cool new tools that are available to all artists and designers. Thank you for watching, and thank you for being part of this crazy thing we're calling reality. <laughs>